Sometimes you run out of words. I was thinking of how to start this uh, briefing and uh, I'm saying that we uh, have received with shock and dismay the news uh, of the bombing this morning of a UN designated shelter in a school. They were there under UN protection. The tears of the UN Relief Agency's Chris Gunnis and the serial escalating condemnations of United Nations leaders up to and including Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General, who called the direct shelling of at least six schools where Palestinians were sheltering from the war with Israel a moral outrage and a criminal act. Those condemnations and expressions of outrage have done exactly nothing to protect civilians in Gaza. So far, the war in Gaza has left more than 1,800 Palestinians dead, the population equivalent to 109-11s, mostly civilians, and including women and hundreds of children, along with 67 Israelis, mostly soldiers. The UN keeps condemning the attacks on civilian facilities by the Israeli military and the compromising of UN facilities by Hamas, all to no avail. It's been calling for ceasefires and getting basically nowhere. At this point, the UN can't even protect the civilians hiding in its elementary schools. Meanwhile, as the Brookings Institution notes, these recent events are not isolated incidents. Frequent major military attack campaigns, the seven-year blockade or the multi-year blockade and the resulting collective psychological trauma are destroying the hope and means of education and with it, the future of Palestinian children and youth. When the United Nations was founded after World War II, the stated aim was to bring international stability and security and peace to a chaotic world by drawing together the world's established nations, 192 of them today, into a compact whereby, whereby they would respect an international rule of law. But for that compact to work, the countries who are signatories to the UN have to believe in the norms that it was designed to defend and have to believe in the UN's authority, or at least in the sanctity of its facilities. That is clearly not the case now. Since the UN's founding, there have been endless massacres and wars in the Congo, in Bosnia, in Rwanda, in Darfur, not to mention the current proliferation of horrors in the Middle East, in Ukraine, in Nigeria. And with five of the 15 members of the United Nations Security Council holding veto powers, including the United States, it's easy for one nation to thwart the will of the entire body whether it's Russia and China stopping interna the international community from intervening to stop the slaughter in Syria, which has killed more than 100,000 people, or the United States running interference for Israel. The UN is clearly not working. So what does the UN do? What does the world do when it's spinning out of control and there's no moral authority, neither governmental, nor international, nor institutional, that can stop it? It may be time to revisit that question and revisit the purpose of the United Nations.